this is a newer song of mine. I released it in uh, 2020, about three years ago. Or Gane ka naam hai Aire. Assalamualaikum and welcome back to the Alif podcast. Today I'm with you from Islamabad actually. Hania Aslam, who you probably know from Zeb and Hania from back in the day. Um, and a very successful audio producer and songwriter on her own right. Welcome. Thank you. you. Thanks for having me, man. I'm good. We're very welcome. And, uh, you know, it's nice to have people outside Karachi finally yeah, yeah, also yeah. on this on this podcast as well but um we also just met for the first time we did, last we did. week yeah right? i'm super happy to be at your studio it's beautiful thank and, you uh, we very... did a recording uh, at mm-hmm. alif mm-hmm. it was a very interesting it was very exciting thing. Yeah. yeah we'll get to that yeah but um i guess as per our format we like to start from you know chronological order right. and your journey so why don't you tell us a little bit about your musical beginnings and how you got into music? Okay, so, all right. Yeah. Um, so initially when people would ask how I got into music, it made no sense to me because uh, <laughs> I come from a family of music lovers. So I had you know, mom played harmonium, chacha played tabla, mm. my dad played harmonica, mm. my mom sang. Mm. So everyone was very, very passionate about music and I grew up thinking that music And it was mm. really astonishing for me when I met people who, you know, when you asked, would you listen to it? And they said, nothing. So, yeah, so grew up loving, loving music, uh, singing, listening to a lot of stuff. And, uh, and all this was all in Islam? No, uh, so I grew up, my father was in government. Okay. Um, grew up, lived, was born in Karachi, Quetta, Mirai, Lahore, Mirai, Faisalabad, Mirai, Pindi, Mirai, so mm. all over the country. Hmm. Um, yeah, so grew up loving, loving instruments. So my first instrument was uh, a pencil case. Tha, us pe ek, 
वन एंड हाफ ऑक्टिव का की बोर्ड बना हुआ था and um i used to i i always had a sense i had an ear for music so i could take out tunes mm. um so i started with that and then uh, my older brother bought a large keyboard casio ka mm-hmm. so i'd always mess around with that and again i think i i learned peripherally my brother would learn the keyboard zeb used to learn vocals ever mm. since she was very small so whenever i visited them i'd just sit in on her lessons and mm. so picked up little from here little from there and you knew zeb uh... zeb is my cousin she's my khala's daughter oh okay so practically grew up together right or um then i got my first guitar when i was about 15 or 16 mm-hmm. and then there was no looking back nice nice so when what was the first guitar and when where did you get it so <laughs> uh my first guitar was a squire strat oh okay which i inherited from my older brother mm mm-hmm. और उसके फॉर द फर्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स आई प्लेड इट विदाउट एन एम्प तो जमीन पे क्रॉस लेग इट बैठ के आई होल्ड इट माय लैप एंड देन आई लीन ओवर सो आई कुड हियर समथिंग एंड देन व्हेन आई फाइनली बॉट एन एम्प आई रियलाइज्ड कि उसके दो पिकअप्स खराब हैं सो बट आई स्टिल आई लव्ड इट एंड दिस इज बिफोर द इंटरनेट सो आई कुड यू नो लुक अप आई वाज जस्ट लर्निंग आई वाज गोइंग टू ओल्ड बुक शॉप्स लुकिंग फॉर बुक्स एनी बुक दैट आई फाउंड ऑन गिटार प्लेइंग इन म्यूजिक आई बॉट and uh, a lot of the initial songs i learned to wo maine sune nahi the i just saw the chord charts and the tabs right. and all so i'd played the right chord progression but i made up my own melodies ah oh, okay nice um and then my first <laughs> acoustic i inherited from my cousin he mm. went off to college so i said please please leave your <laughs> guitar with me so that was a yamaha but i don't remember which one yeah yeah so i played that for ages those what 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 was your listening like what were you into so again influenced by family and older mm. cousins so grew up listening to a lot of desi music a lot of filmy mm. um folk music ghazal wagaira ha jo older cousins the wo classic rock bahut sunte the so i've been a beatles fan since i was about 6 mm-hmm. or um then my brother was hugely into pink floyd and guns and roses and the yeah. usual the yeah. people were into Yeah. So heard all of that when I sort of came into my own I started listening to more folk uh, acoustic music a lot mm. of Susan Vega, Leonard Cohen, Nick mm. Drake. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. So it's been kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point did you and like was Zeb and Nania the first serious musical endeavor that you part 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 took in but for sure definitely yeah part part took part eight um yeah so again i zeb and i are cousins to uska bhi wo jo music ka ek junoon tha hamari family mein hmm. she also inherited it i also inherited it mm-hmm. so her mother really wanted her to uh be able to sing so they had you know gotten her training since she was very young yeah my interest was more in instruments hmm. so whenever i found i knew my chacha kept his tabla under the bed so whenever i go to his house I'd be, they'd find me under the bed <laughs> and they'd pull me out um so when i went to college in 98 yeah. uh, in West, western massachusetts in america to yeah. wahan so pe i got my my own first acoustic guitar again a yamaha yeah. and i was always fascinated by songs yeah you know one of the favorite activities i remember from my childhood is every night me and my parents and my brother would go for a drive mm. and that would just be driving around listening to music and when i was very small i used to imagine ke ye tape mein chote chote musicians hain aur wo usi waqt baja rahe hain and i used to be like what that that's really cool yeah. <laughs> so i always and i and every time i'd hear a new song it it would explode my mind like there's thousands of songs and they're all different they all make you feel different and how do they do this and mm. so i was very very fascinated by how how this works so i kind of from a very young age i was trying to reverse engineer songs mm. to try and figure them out and you know figure out how they were put together how they do what they do mm. and then uh, so i was in college for a year ek saal baad zeb came to a college very close to me about 30 minutes away and uh, in my family when you get together and you wanted to have fun there were two things we would eat and we would play music we would sing together yeah so when she came and we'd get together she had brought her harmonium and i used to play tabla also so hmm. hum baith ke bahut shor machate the apne dorm mein like my you know dorm mates and all were quite sick of us hmm. 
but um, that's where we started playing together and I was I had written my first song and I played it for Zave and she got very excited and then we started attempting to write songs together again just for fun yeah this could become that. our life yeah, right yeah. Um, and that's in fact we wrote Chup in Zabe's college there was another song at that time Ya yeah, the third one Raat and yeah. I was a computer science major so I had my desktop and I discovered this free multi-track DAW at the time called mm. Cool Edit Pro okay <laughs> so and I'd even bought a Tascam tape multi-recorder so I think it was from the beginning nice and uh, yeah and I think right I was also writing songs just to be able to mess with the technologies and yeah. figure out what was possible and what wasn't yeah so yeah that's that's where it started from very cool um so when you got back from college did you work in another field before you switched over into this definitely um I I graduated a couple of years before Zabe so I moved back to Islamabad mm. and um I had I'd majored in computer science but yeah. by the end of my undergrad I discovered anthropology. Mm. So I was very very interested in going into that. I I, I thought I was going to be an academic. I wanted to mm. do my masters and PhD in that. Mm. So Islamabad jab I um I joined the development sector. I I worked for a couple of years in some NGOs. Mm. And at that time I realized that I was writing songs um pretty like yeah pretty often. Mm. Mm-hmm. and uh, i wanted to start performing with people yeah so at that time there was a cafe in islamabad called civil junction <laughs> and unka ek second floor tha so every saturday uh, mm. arshad bhatti the owner mm. would open it up to the young people of islamabad like mm. do what you want to do with this yeah so when i came back people were already ha- holding open mics there um, there were groups that were having improv comedy and all kinds of stuff yeah so that's where i was uh, there was a band called Cordroy yeah uh, at that time and they the first two times i played live they let me sort of insert myself in the middle of their set <laughs> nice. and i played with the band and nice it was really fun i did some open mics there mm-hmm. and uh, yeah and then they moved back and uh, so so, so then i guess you know coming towards we're getting towards like um the pre um chop era right so mm-hmm. how long then did you and zeb just stayed with those songs before thinking let's record them let's make an album so yeah so oh, all right i missed i missed the whole part of the story um so like i said i was a computer science major and i had my desktop and all and for mm-hmm. one of my classes i had to make a website mm-hmm. and at that time i realized ke game content ki hai so anyone can make a website yeah. but in order to entice people to come to it there's got to be something on it right that uh, they would want to see yeah. or hear so chote chote demos banaye the yahi teen gaane chup yaad aur raat and uh, i uploaded them and uh, over the next aur usko khud hi banaye the apne task cam wagar bilkul task cam bhi nahi wo i had that desktop with a big monitor aur us waqt wo monitor ke upar ek wo hota tha itna sa mic अच्छा <laughs> 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 and they started i didn't realize but about a month or two later somebody emailed me chup saying oh there's some pakistani students who've made this song <laughs> so it had gone viral within <laughs> the, back yeah, yeah yeah within the pakistani <laughs> students community yeah, yeah. the desi students community and it, like everyone yeah. was listening to it and it had made its way to pakistan aur usi waqt i think fm 100 fm 89 had just started hmm. उसी के थ्रू 
chupki zor pe zeb met mikal and then we met gambi and all these guys through them and yeah played some of our newer songs for them and they were like you need to do this you need to do this and for a couple of years you know we were just so excited to even have met them yeah. and that they thought that what we had was good enough to be recorded and to be released mm. Mm. and for us that was enough mm. but uh, they they really pushed us and encouraged us and we didn't even realize but they had much you know longer broader vision right uh, knowing that the industry needed more women of course and needed us waqt to shayad kuch bhi nahi hua yeah, the female needed, driven exactly you needed know? visible and we were just you know didn't want to do interviews didn't we want to be on tv and i remember mikal sitting us down and yelling at us you don't realize how important this is and get your acts together and you need to go out there and other girls need to see you yeah and we didn't realize at that time but when i came back from canada some years ago and i was talking to some younger artists say you know 10 15 years younger than me mm-hmm. and they said something to me you know i i, I was a bit dismissive of fame and mm. all of that and they're like no but it's so important because we were watching and i was like oh you know it sent shivers down my spine yeah but uh, yeah. no kudos to you know mikal gambi shalom all these guys for mm-hmm. for realizing how important it was yeah i mean i guess in a way because as you mentioned both you and zeb had a f- supportive families in the sense of music was yeah. normal to everyone yeah yeah right so perhaps that was one reason why you didn't know how much of an outlier you guys yeah yeah were. possibly <laughs> so, so that's also so zeb's family was incredibly supportive my mm. father mm. was a bit of a problem mm. he was not happy at all I so, mean you'd gone and studied I know I know <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> which was blowing up which was yeah <laughs> so yeah he just didn't understand right but um, but i don't know music is just this thing when it calls you you have to yeah. go <laughs> this this yeah. it's a no brainer you know this yeah. you can't say no to it hmm. so, so as far as the because often jao jo uh, bump road bump aata hai mm. for young pakistani artists is like lyrics ka question yeah. you know either you collaborate with a nice writer yeah. or you you know work with or some people have a knack for it yeah. so how did you guys approach it So I've been writing my own lyrics from hmm. the beginning. Um Chup we wrote together. Uh Shuru me in fact Zeb's older sister uh, Maliha she was helping us out. Mm-hmm. Um but primarily I write my own lyrics. Um sometimes we get stuck like I I'd, I'd write the chorus and yeah. a verse but then need help with another verse so. Yeah. We have a friend called Bilal Sami. Mm-hmm. So he was very very helpful in that. Mm. But um but yeah It, it it is the hardest part for me uh, yeah. of songwriting yeah but at the end of the day i end up i end up writing them myself because it, it's it's my voice you know if anyone else writes words they mm. won't they'll sound clunky you yeah. know coming out of my mouth yeah yeah so i've realized by now that it it has to be it has to be my own voice and like what drives the the vision of like you know uh, do you come up with music first Yeah. And like a melody then. Yeah. Yeah. And then are you thinking in terms of a subject or then you're just trying to fit words and then the subject comes to you. So mm. for me a song comes out of an emotional state. Right. Right? I I'm the kind of person I'm not my emotions don't fluctuate too fast. Mm. So I stay within a state for a while, right? right? And when I feel something strongly enough <clears throat> when i pick up my guitar and i play mm. it so that's flowing out right that yeah. emotion starts to take shape yeah within the music hmm to a general feel or vibe to already hoti hai i mean i i don't i don't give it words or labels yeah. right from the beginning yeah but it usually starts with a riff or a chord progression mm-hmm. um us pe phir you know i'll i'll start experimenting with melodies at that point sometimes when a song is meant to be it just yeah the lyrics just, and the melody come, come together yeah. chaldi was like that hmm. it it descended almost fully formed hmm. nice which was yeah literally you like you feel like it, it was somewhere and it just kind of came through happens, yeah so. yeah it was quite incredible um but uh, but but for aire i sat on the melody for about 2 years 
and it was very very hard to come up with the mm. with the lyrics so i i really struggled i really couldn't beat my head against the wall yeah some some as you said sometimes a song comes through in a moment yeah. in a, in a session yeah, yeah. you know and sometimes it takes its time yeah, and yeah, things have yeah. to absolutely happen for you to realize absolutely. what needs to happen in the song you know? absolutely absolutely but so no that's always very interesting hearing about different songwriters ap- yeah. approaches yeah, and yeah. you know how things come together so then so you're back and zeb is back and mikal se baat ho rahi hai yeah. so, so what was then the catalyst then to finally say acha karte hain so yeah so then so i was back and then zeb came back and then i went again i went to england for my masters okay वहाँ पे गम्बी और शालम आए हुए थे किसी कॉन्सर्ट के लिए एंड आई मेट दम एंड अगेन गम्बी वॉज लाइक सो उट्स योर डील यू गर्ल सीरियस डू दिस और यू जस्ट मैसिंग अराउंड आई कॉल जेब इज आस्किंग मी फॉर सीरियस अभी सीरियस आई थिंक वे सीरियस लेट्स डू इट लेट्स डू इट सो वेन वी केम बैक वी केम टू कराची और शालम का स्टूडियो था छोटा सा तो वहाँ पे दे गॉट Manu mm-hmm. on board also, and for about three weeks, every day we'd go to that studio, and uh, we had nine songs complete at that time, mm-hmm. and uh, we just jammed them out. Okay. And the arrangements yeah. emerged from there. And Gumby was part of this. Gumby was spearheading it. Right. Gumby, <clears throat> it was it was his impetus. It was his kind of nice energy that nice. that made this whole thing happen. I yeah. don't think it would have happened otherwise. That's great that uh, he put that you know belief into you. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and we couldn't believe it because yeah. it's Gumby. Oh my God, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, and the songs were sounding amazing, and then we were trying to decide on a studio and a producer. Mm-hmm. So checked out a few places here, but then decided that it had to be Mikal. Yeah. So took it to Lahore. I brought everyone over. Everyone was staying at Zeb's house, mm-hmm. and uh, within ten days. the drums and bass were tracked hmm. gumbi one one take master yeah and manu bhai of course yeah and then and uh, did they do drums and bass like as a unit or did they do it separately separately so did rough guy tracks yeah. for all the songs right and then mm-hmm. uh, they did the instruments separately and then shalim recorded his uh, his tracks so within 10 days nine songs were like 80% track hmm and then uh, the structures khade ho gaye the bilkul bilkul uh then 10th gana um it was banke it was the mm. last song of the album so that took a while um mm. eventually ended up arranging it with the the coven guys mm-hmm. uh, samir hamza and mufti sekandar mufti so how did that happen like was there a reason that it did it didn't pan out with gumbi and us waqt complete nahi tha acha us waqt complete nahi tha and uh, we hadn't really we weren't really sure ke no ga name we, we thought maybe we could be but then yeah. we were like let's do 10 songs it's right. like nice how ground know, number, number. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, hamza and all like mikal studio is always a hub in lahore and of everyone course. used to hang out there so we met all these guys uh, over there and big fan of their musicality yeah so decided to give it a shot with them and yeah yeah and it I mean, I was just listening to yeah, the album yeah, yeah. after many years yeah. recently. Uh, I mean, just a <laughs> little while ago, yeah. and it stands out. I actually didn't know that um, yeah, yeah. the last track was played by those guys. Yeah. But Anas mentioned, and I yeah, went yeah, to yeah. it. And, oh yeah. Yeah, they go close. <laughs> it sounds like Kofan, but yeah. Zeb and. And then vocals, we were waiting because Mikal had bought a, a an Avalon pre. Ah. and we were waiting for that to come yeah. from the US so a few months i think we waited for that yeah and then when it came then we tracked our vocals and uh, yeah so how would you describe the whole studio experience i mean being your first time and i'm sure the mag me koi ideas bane honge and mm-hmm. then it ends up being something and how for how sure. did it, how was that period for you guys it was it was very daunting yeah. because uh we had never been in a studio before i had never even you know seen pictures or just mm. i was completely clueless mm. 
And in fact, at that time, I had no idea about musical theory. I didn't even know what chords I was playing. Yeah. So Shalom would be like, "What was I doing? What was I doing?" And I'm like, "Yeah, only it had every." So then they tell me, "This is what you're playing." Yeah. Um, so yeah, I went into the studio. Had never sung in a proper mic. Had no technique. Mm. You know, these guys had enormous patience with us. Mm. Um, Mikal sometimes did not have patience with us. Yeah. So कुछ गाने रो रो के भी हमने गाए हैं साथ में एक टिश्यू का डब्बा पड़ा हुआ. But um, <laughs> but what a what a great learning experience. Yeah, like, I'm sure. Learned so much. and um just so lucky and so blessed you know to to have the kind of team that we had and i i listened to the album again after ages maybe mm. about 5 6 years ago and it exploded my brain i mean that is a really really good record i mean to be able to say that about something you've made in you yourself yeah, is yeah. A absolutely huge pleasure, absolutely you know? because shuru mein i i was coming from a space of i used to listen to a lot of bands and all that would record in their own garages or in their own like my hero was Nick Drake yeah. and most of his stuff was done in his own bedroom mm. and uh, i didn't really listen to these very very you know produced. well produced yeah. you know big acts mm. so initially i just i didn't quite understand what mm. they were aiming for but because we we didn't really have any idea so we mm. were like these guys yeah, know what they're doing let them it. do yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and i'm so glad we did so um us point pe like did you have any matlab obviously gumbi to one take master yeah, but yeah. did you have input on the comping the takes editing or you just kind of let them no we just we let them handle it all hmm. yeah. so aapka phir production mein interest phir ka pehla hua so at I mean, that we will come back to yeah. the to zevan hania yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the album but it <coughs> led me to this you know yeah no like i said um bachpan se Hmm. I was very very interested in how songs are written and then you know how they take the shape that they do. Yeah. And like like I said I bought the Tascam multi track and hmm. I was using my first DAW back in 2000. Yeah. So had an interest then. Yeah. Sucked at it. Didn't know what I was doing. Hmm. Had no idea. Hmm. But Mikal meeting Mikal was he's my you know greatest mentor mm. uh, in terms of audio technology mm. and music and he would as you'd be doing things he'd be he'd be telling me ki ye kar raha hu ye kar raha hu and of course most of it went over my head yeah but uh, throughout uh, you know my time in zeban hania whether we were in the studio or on stage i was far more interested in what was happening mm. near the board mm. rather than what was happening on stage or in the yeah, yeah. in the recording booth so yeah. i definitely i i love technology i always have hmm. and uh, took me a while but then i realized i like music and technology like that intersection is is where i belong that's hmm. where i need to be hmm. and um yeah i can relate to that yeah, as yeah, you yeah, can yeah, see <laughs> i love being in the the stage stresses me out because it's it's not in your control yeah and um I don't know I'm just such a perfectionist that yeah. it's almost always a disappointment. Absolutely. So I I realized a lot uh, <laughs> a lot later that I have I have control issues. Yeah. And uh, but but it's not even control matlab yahan pe we would really take our live act seriously you know yeah. Zeb and I we would make sure that we were rehearsing at least a week hmm. um for any given show uh, if we had a new musician in our lineup we bring them in and you know make sure that they went yeah. through all the songs enough that they you know knew them properly yeah. and then so you'd practice 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 get it perfect hmm. go to the venue not be able to hear yourself don't know yeah. what's going on end up sounding terrible so it was it's just it's very yeah, disheartening it is it is yeah but taking a step back um the rest about then you know album ban gayi ab release ke time pe fir kya scene tha like were you guys anticipating and anything new the kind of response that you had no no so even throughout recording i j- i was just very excited to hear the result hmm. that's as far as i was yeah. thinking i wasn't thinking beyond that hmm. and even at that time i i mean one doesn't assume but well, we didn't assume hmm. that we'd be successful at hmm. uh whatever it is that we were trying to do um i i was still I was working at NCA. Hmm. Um I was on my way to I was looking at universities uh, for a PhD programs. They wanted to go into either banking or entrepreneurship or something. Right. 
and uh, but this was something it was like a rite of passage you know we had these songs that had to come out of our system yeah but uh, in my mind i was like i just want the cd and i want to pop it in my car and mm. i want to hear the whole album and i'm mm. going to be so happy and then that's mm. it mm. um album record so another amazing thing about all these guys which i should mention is they they all recorded it for us they did all the work um without taking any payment from us they had so much faith in us they wow. said when you get the deal and you get paid then you can pay us that's amazing so i mean that was kind of a yeah. something that drove us also because yeah. all these guys have so much faith in us and yeah. you know and we have to make something of this in order to be able to mm-hmm. um you know justify yeah. justify that faith yeah so after the album was complete zeb and i moved to karachi hmm um her sister lived here her brother was here and we just started meeting people with like i'd have my guitar mm. and we'd have self printed cds and we just land up at people's houses and they'd be like okay they should really know what to make was we'd be like let's sing can we sing for you let, let us sing for you. <laughs> okay <laughs> so we did that and you know people would invite us and they'd be like okay come we'll mm. have a little jam sing along and mm. we can sing for our friends and and at one of these jams um there was someone there was the wife of someone who worked at Jio right i think so they connected us to um fire records mhm and the infamous fire the infamous <laughs> fire records but um, but i mean it was it was part of our story as part of our journey and you know can't yeah it's part I, of I, everyone's who is in music as so got got to give credit where credit's due so yeah so uh, so met with them and they they said they wanted to pick it up yeah and uh, we got paid we got to you know pay all the wonderful people who helped us make the album mm-hmm. and then uh, another friend so gambi's friend had worked with sakib malik on the video of kamaj mm. nariman ansari so gambi handed her the album and he said please pass this on to sakib because zeb had heard an interview of sakib's in which he had said ke i you know his livelihood was ads but yeah. he said if i if i really really like a song you know i'll make the video you know funding doesn't matter like the money can come yeah. later yeah so we're like oh my god what if he likes one of our songs mm. so she then called us one day she's like oh, i i i met him at a party but he was insanely busy so right at the end i managed to drop the cd in his pocket and i don't know if he's going to listen to it and then about a week later she called and she was screaming she's like ah so excited he he loves one of your songs he wants to meet you mm. and he yeah then we met him and he loved aitbar and he said i want to do this video and i wanted to be a choreographed mm-hmm. dance uh, video and yeah we just couldn't believe our luck that's amazing actually i was just listening to that song yeah, yeah. earlier and and again i found out today that obran yeah played, yeah played on it Omar as well was playing on it so yeah i mean that that is a good good one to pick yeah <laughs> so yeah so just i mean i still can't believe the serendipity and just luck that we had yeah um i don't know some something we had something looking out for us and yeah or wo I, i'm getting goosebumps yeah. because i have the same experience with yeah. especially the part of you that is very honest with your creativity right yeah. and you're not trying to make something trying to copy something or trying to get someone to like yeah. it yeah. you know when it's yeah. purely coming Absolutely. from that connection that you 100%. have 100% then when it comes out there's some magic that does this some so way <laughs> shuru mein mujhe samajh hi na aaye ki i don't understand why this is all happening yeah and over the years i i realized that there's a sincerity in our music there's an earnestness absolutely which which forms a real connection with yeah. real listeners Bilkul. you know we we never we were never out to be mass hit so mm. you know that was never part of the plan mm. we just i i want to write songs that i want to listen to mm. that i will fall in love with and i i will hear over and over again yeah. and i think that sincerity is very very important it it communicates itself and you know it, it draws people towards you yeah it does and i feel that I don't know do you tell me what you feel about it but it feels like over the years because of things like algorithms and you know social media and the need to 
be liked and please others mm. with an artist that pure purity of the initial mm. passion for music by the time that they become popular and are regularly releasing songs yeah. it feels like they get disconnected at some point i can tell you that from my own experience yeah. r- writing after chop was mm. so difficult mm. because we you know eventually we had a very large uh, audience we had a large listenership yeah and all of them were in here <laughs> and every it's i couldn't hard to keep it like yeah protected. because <laughs> absolutely yeah, because again i i had i couldn't write for myself anymore because mm. there was all these ears that mm. i knew were waiting to hear yeah and it became very very difficult and you know it took me a few years to kind of shut that off mm. and return to mm. to how i used to you know how i used to write songs and how i used to engage with songwriting mm. so yeah so it's very difficult yeah so i mean after the um the release and obviously it got popular and everything how was the um follow up as in playing shows and did you did you end up playing any shows with the actual lineup that um recorded on the album we played one or two um but I think they were for television right. like MTV I think MTV unplugged tha mm-hmm. ya kuch mm-hmm. so played with Gambi Shalom Manu bhai on that mm-hmm. and uh and but, it, one, but it wasn't yeah. a regular it was not because of course they were so busy and of they course. had their own bands and everything so yeah. we couldn't so we I was telling you earlier also um we asked Hamza Jafri and the Coven crew mm. to be our backing band mm. So we played some shows um there wasn't itna koi live music mm. ka culture mm. nahi tha us waqt bhi mm. but uh, the turning point was coke studio of course yeah mm. so we had been approached for season 1 because gambi was playing drums on it mm-hmm. and he had uh, suggested us to rohel lekin us waqt album complete ho rahi thi mm. and we didn't we wanted to wait Yeah. Till we could present our own music. I mean, right. we didn't want to be, you know, part of the backup vocalist team. We of wanted course. to bring our own sound. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad. I think it was a good move. It was a great move. Yeah. I think. Uh, मतलब I got exposed to yeah. your music through that. Absolutely. So yeah. You know? So second season. <coughs> excuse me. We went on board. Uh, so Gambi gave our album to Rohail, and he really, really liked it. Mm. and uh, we went over to his house he called us and decided to do four four songs from the album yeah and uh, and it was it was really incredible because till then we had met a bunch of people post album release you know trying to figure out mm. how mm. to start getting shows how to start yeah. touring and the next moves yeah, yeah and mostly it was people were telling us really stupid things mm. care you know as women you need to show more skin or you need to have achha, dancers achha, on achha, stage yeah, 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 yeah of course <laughs> you know as of women course. yeah yeah this you probably didn't yeah. have to hear the kind of nonsense that we had to and we're not those kind of people at all it made yeah. no sense to us yeah but then when we went to meet rohail and his team for the first time since we you know come into this space we met with a team and people who were only interested in the music hmm. they didn't care you know if if we had walked on in jeans and t-shirts and no makeup yeah. we wouldn't care at all yeah they looking at the artist you know? absolutely and and he told us ke whatever your musical dreams are tell hmm. me and hmm. i'm going to try and make them come true and that's how siddiq with the rabab came on board oh, wow. so we told him you know pemona it's a song that we've grown up with uh, from afghanistan and hmm. we've done this variation of it for the album but we'd love to do the original version hmm. um so ek to you know it, it just made us feel validated and get to do what we wanted to do musically and just being ourselves not hmm. having to pretend mm-hmm. to be someone else and we did it and then we went off and we had a couple of concerts that we played and that summer i think we'd gone to nathia gali for a holiday with the band hmm and that weekend pemona was Release. releasing the first yeah. song and we were sitting at taj chicken in nathia gali and we were having chicken and suddenly cell phone started beeping literally movies mein jaise hota hai 
and they're like, oh my god, people are responding to Paimon, oh my god, it's going so, and, and the whole day, and the whole week, and it just grew <laughs> bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and then, and then chop, and chal diye, and then rona chhod diya, yeah, and that was, like, there was no looking back after that, yeah, that was, that was when, I, I feel like that's when we were launched, it, it, I mean, you got huge at that point, yeah. you know, yeah. it, like, it was like, um, if, I guess around that time, if someone were to ask to name a female right. artist from Pakistan, the first name that would right. come up would be Zeb and right. Right? right? But I guess the band didn't last too long beyond that. Um, so yeah, so this was back in the, the, our first season of Coke Nine, Studio, it was 2009. Yeah. And uh, we played our last show together in 2013. Okay. So for about four or five years, it was quite intense. We toured a lot. We mm. went to India quite a few times. And mm. and this is when uh, Shani was in the band Correct. at that time. Correct. Right. Correct. <clears throat> so uh, what then led to things coming apart? So... And you never got a chance to do a second record, I guess. So we actually, we were working on it. Uh, mm. Jamal Rahman had opened True Brew mm. uh, Studio and Records in Lahore. Yeah. And we had songs, uh, we had about four or five songs and we were working on an EP. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had done that song in India, Kya Khayal Hai, as part of the Duarists okay. uh, show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that collaboration was with the Shantanu Moitra and Swant, um, Swanand Kirkire. Mm-hmm. And the four of us were very, very simpatico. Like we mm. creatively, interpersonally, we got along really, really well. Did they contact you post Coke or, or, or did you contact them? No, How so we were, talk? so the tourists team, yeah. uh, I think Babelfish uh, was the production company. They, mm. they got in touch with us. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we went, we did the song, came yeah. back, and then, you know, continued talking to Shantanu and so on. And then, you know, all four of us thought we should do more songs together. Because within within three days, we had come up with Kya Khayal Hai. And, mm. you know, it was lovely and people mm. really, really liked it. Mm. And it was obvious that ideas just flowed very, very easily between mm. the four of us. So then we went back to India. Um, Shantanu has a little getaway in Pune. So mm. the four of us went there. Stayed there about two nights, I think, and wrote about four or five songs. So um, it was also But like, you know, this industry, you know, nothing happens quickly. Okay. You know, everyone's busy yes. and things take time. And yeah. in the meantime, I, I was kind of realizing that this isn't, this isn't all that I want to be doing. Mm. And touring was taking a toll temperamentally. I'm, I'm not suited for it. Mm. I need... Mm. I need some kind of routine. I need rootedness mm. more than routine. Mm. And uh, and my there was too much noise in my head. Right. So writing songs yeah. was becoming difficult. Mm. And I really that itch uh, to pursue music technology, audio technology was getting more and more and more. Mm. And. You know, I kept thinking initially that if this is done, then I will go. But the thing is, you know, there will be ongoing projects and then we take on new projects and I realized that oh, there's no end. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to put yeah. the brakes on um, mm. and I was like, I, I'm sorry, I need to step out. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, so we didn't end up finishing uh, mm. either of those albums. Mm. And yeah, 2013, we played our last show in London, our first show. And last show in London. Hmm. What venue was that? This was uh, part of the Alchemy Festival. Yeah. So some, either embankment, not mm. embankment. South Bank, maybe. South Bank, South Bank may, yeah. Uh, forgetting the name yeah, of the yeah, ball. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So hmm. went off to Canada and hmm. rediscovered myself. Hmm. So then that was basically the end of Zeb and Hanya. Pretty much, yeah. Um, after that, did you like take any break or you went straight into what so I, you were putting back for so I, many yeah, years? No, because I'd been <laughs> planning it. So the year yeah. before, in 2012, yeah. I'd uh, gone and spent the summer in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And and even before, I think the year before, we'd been in the US and I'd gone to check out Berkeley and Juilliard. Because mm. I think what was also happening was... With Zeb and me, like I told you, we were so lucky, but that had a reverse effect also. Mm. 
because um, opportunities came too fast. Yeah. And uh, some part was, of you felt you weren't ready for uh, yeah, all or, this. Yeah, <laughs> or or be able to take full advantage, yeah. or you know, you know, give give the best of us. Um, the, I I I heard a quote by Oscar Wilde. I'm going to mm. paraphrase, which is um, the two worst things in the world is not getting what you want and getting what you want. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. at that time, you know, realized we always plan for failure, but we never plan for success. I mean, had never thought that you know we'd rise so. Mm-hmm. so much mm-hmm. so quickly mm-hmm. and got a lot of opportunities that i didn't feel i was ready for mm-hmm. technically knowledge wise skill wise mm-hmm. and just really felt the need to learn more yeah so so yeah so when so but i didn't know ke kya seekhna hai music school ja ke you mm-hmm. know music theory ko instrument mm-hmm. proper seekhna hai mm-hmm. um, berkeley type school ja ke mm-hmm. kuch aur seekhna hai um finally decided that if i learn engineering that will help me improve all my other skill sets too because if i can record myself yeah well you know yeah. my singing will get better my playing will get better yeah you know? yeah so um i'm canadian citizen mm mm-hmm. so i thought the best option uh, would be go to toronto mm. so i went i checked out a bunch of music schools um picked one sort of set everything up for the next year mm mm-hmm. So yeah, I played the last show in London. Yeah. Went back home and packed up, left my instruments to mm. various musicians yeah. across the country and uh, and moved. So then how was the actual experience then in Toronto actually formally learning? It was music amazing. Production? It was amazing. It was exactly <laughs> what I needed. Um so there was I had learned I had learned a lot, you know, like I said, uh, Of course, you pick up so many things. Absolutely, along the yeah. Way. But there were gaps. There were gaps in my knowledge. So that course it was an eleven-month uh, diploma mm. in audio engineering at uh, Trebus, mm. and it really just plugged all the holes. Mm. And all of my class fellows were straight out of high school. They were all mostly under twenty. Yeah. And I think I got the most out of that course because I understood what they were teaching me and why they were teaching me yeah. what they were teaching me. Yeah. and i also realized how much i already knew you know god bless mikal hmm. he'd been throwing knowledge my way hmm. for years and years hmm. um us waqt samajh nahi aa rahi thi but you know when things were put in context me go oh my god i already knew that and that yeah. that's why this is and this is why that is and yeah and um another thing like in pakistan so in any career it's best the way to do it you start at the bottom Hmm. and as you rise up you learn hmm. you learn through experience you learn through people mentoring you teaching hmm. you so by the time you get to your mid career level you have the requisite knowledge and all but yeah. that wasn't true for us we just got sucked right up to the top yeah. almost yeah. immediately yeah. so in toronto what i got to do was i got to do that i started from the bottom hmm. um i got i was stage hand at festivals bars mein hmm. speakers or tadi you hmm. know hmm. setting and doing routing doing hmm. all kinds of stuff and also getting to experiment and grow away from all those ears and all yeah. that audience yeah. that and had been weighing on me question. absolutely yeah. absolutely so um so i i really i sort of got to do it the way i should have done it hmm. from the beginning so it was very very useful I'm, like it was I'm, i think it was one of the best decisions that i mean I've i think this is a very interesting uh thing that you've brought up the the to have that level of um integrity and honesty with yourself to know ke matlab opportunities jis tarah ki i'm sure aapko mil rahi thi yeah. many other people would have been like let's right, go you right, know you right. know they're just chasing the bigger biggest right, right. bigger to bigger bigger yeah. things and even though somewhere inside they may know everyone knows ke, yeah you can't like you're not yourself. at that level yeah, yeah. you know and i find this with without naming anyone this certain you know in our scene there's several people mm. who were found themselves in a similar place yeah. as you did yeah. and shot up to fame right but you look at them now right. 15 20 years mm. later and they're kind of struggling right because their base isn't strong yeah. you know and they can't recreate whatever magic that they had of course you yeah. know from a set of circumstances yeah. no and at trevis they told us um, not getting an opportunity too early is almost worse than not getting an opportunity mm. because 
then once you then blow it in front of everyone that's the thing when your <laughs> reputation's gone then for the rest of your yeah. life people are going to be like oh that's the guy yeah. who yeah. made that mistake you know yeah so yeah so it's always good to first prepare yourself and then if if you can if you have the the resources and the time which right. which i luckily did right so did you um and have you learned music theory as well uh not too much right um they did there was a music fundamentals uh, class at trebus hmm. but uh, i did start taking uh, piano lessons hmm. uh, last year with i have a an 8 year old brother yeah so he and i started right from the basics yeah um to us to ab mein ja ke seekh rahi at least western theory mm. and it's proving to be very useful yeah the, i mean i'm in the in the boat of not knowing much theory yeah, yeah. and yeah. spending my musical kind of education mm. which is mostly self education yeah. in the engineering side yeah yeah right but what do you feel about the idea that music theory can box you in uh, do you feel that way or, or do you have that impression about learning theory um, because as a artist as an expressionist hmm. you don't necessarily need to know you don't know i mean right. th- i've come this far yeah um also our tradition is oral and we tend to play by ear yeah and uh, people in the west who only learned um technically yeah and like a lot of classical western musicians i've met mm. they need they need the sheet music they need the notation yeah. if you play them something they you know they can't mm. they can't play by ear mm. but i i guess i ideally you have a mix of both yes so how the theory that i know now is helping me is i still start just by feel and by mm. ear but if i get stuck and i don't know where to go then i can turn to theory so it's a tool yeah. Yeah. right yeah. it's a tool like anything else mm-hmm. um so i i i i'm not going to say that you have to know theory yeah but but it doesn't hurt and also if you do want to go international hmm. and you want to be able to play with professional musicians abroad yeah it's a it's a like, language you need to it's speak a language and it, <laughs> it 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 expedites communication yeah and if you know notation you know hmm. if you have to go rehearse with someone you can make sheet music of all your songs and hand them out and then hmm. you don't have to spend you know half an hour an hour going over each song they yeah. have all the information and yeah so it's useful right yeah so when were you when you were doing your uh, course mm-hmm. did your peers have any idea ke you know back home you were this not really star not almost really. <laughs> they were very confused by me they like, knew she why is she here Huh. but uh, and they were all into either hip hop or EDM. Oh okay. So even stylistically very I was very different. Yeah yeah, it was very very different. And what what kind of like experience did your teachers have? Were they like producers who were in the industry or yeah. just academic side? No, no, they were mostly mm-hmm. because even there it's it's hard to earn a living from music and yeah. it's hard to learn a living from and and the best regular gigs are teaching. Yes. So a lot of people are doing everything, you know, they're teaching mm. and they're doing live and mm. they're doing everything else. That like the guy who taught us uh, mixing and all. Mm. He um he he was a very very popular metal producer. Oh, okay. And uh, uh what's his name? Oh, I don't even remember. Darius I, I don't remember. Okay. So yeah. I mean he didn't work with like yeah. very very famous yeah. uh, bands, but um but yeah, he was well known and respected right, right, right. and uh, the head of the department was worked in uh, recording audio for animated films mm. and shows mm. which is a big industry in toronto yeah. so they were all working working engineers and and was the teaching uh, did have an element of learning analog boards yeah. and gear and yeah. stuff there was a <coughs> studio um in another part of the city mm. and for the recording techniques class we'd go there mm. and they had a, a Mitsubishi board mm. and we did it all we did the routing and the patchwork and the miking and all of that nice so i had i mean only about 2 3 months of experience on a board but mm. but but i know how it works so given mm. enough time i can figure things out mm, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but going. but so what is your um kind of take on the whole digital and analog 
Um, I mean, I'm completely digital. Yeah. Um, just because I can't afford analog. Ha! Huh, that is most yeah. people in most cases. Yeah. But do you? I mean, would you say you can hear difference, or what does it make you? approach things differently having knobs and faders definitely definitely know? yeah um I, there is it if if a good enough engineer is hmm. using great equipment of course it's going to sound hmm. so much better than an amateur hmm. working on digital absolutely yeah but um but digital is getting closer and closer All and closer the time. yeah um but having said that i do so i'm completely in the box hmm. um but the friend of mine in Toronto who masters hmm. all my music he hmm. he's all analog yeah so you get that so I do that the, my my yeah. last step yeah. is always like it does add it does add something and that's a popular uh, workflow now to yeah. track maybe at a nice studio get yeah. some analog yeah, gear yeah, yeah. and then finish in the mastering for sure, for sure. and everything in between is in the box yeah so how has the mixing journey and producing journey been it's and it's very some of the highlight projects that you Yeah, have it's very exciting. Um I So I've been doing I've been producing my own stuff now since about 2015. Hmm. And I was part producing some stuff uh, in Toronto for local artists there mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. Uh but since I moved back and I've set up a studio at home and I have a nice big room. It's about 21 by 17. Nice. And I've gotten nice uh, treatment, and it's mm. treatment-wise, it's it's almost where I want it to be. I'm just missing a diffuser or two, mm. like I was saying. But for the first time in my life, I have a room whose sound I trust. Yeah. Which is the first step to anyone's mixing Absolutely. journey, right? Absolutely. And because I can trust what I'm hearing, mm. I all those doubts that I've always had, those are kind of mm. uh, fading away. Mm. Um, I produced uh, Jimmy Khan's EP mm. last year and I think that's been one of the biggest projects that I've yeah. done so far and it sounds nice very, yeah very yeah I'm, I'm quite happy very yeah healthy. I'm quite happy with the way it, it, we <clears throat> tracked it at Raki Jamil's mm-hmm. studio in Lahore red brick yeah and then uh, vocals and acoustics we did at my place mm. and uh, Jimmy Jimmy again showed a lot of faith in me and he pushed me, which is why I ended up because I do have a lot of self doubt. Mm. That voice yes. just won't stop. Yeah. Uh, but I'm so glad he did push me because I really, really enjoyed the process. Ek it was recorded beautifully. Mm. I don't believe in processing too much. Mm. Uh, if what you've captured at source is good enough, you don't. All you need to do is clean up a little bit. Yeah, you end yeah. up if you try to do too much. And yeah. You know, often I find myself okay, man, mixing whole mill. Yeah. Yeah. And then I. I'm not happy with the sound and I take all the plugins off and mm. I'm like, wow, this sounds better than what yeah, I have. Yeah, Come yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you know. so, so, yeah, so I ended up mixing those three songs mm. and my first big project, my first sort of body uh, of work mixing-wise. Yeah. yeah. And I'm quite happy with it. For the first, for yeah. the first album, mm-hmm. um, I think it sounds pretty good. And uh, now my I've bought better speaker, bigger speakers. Yeah. And if I'm recording my own EP, which is yes. one of the reasons that I was here. Just, why don't you tell us about that actually? Like, what is okay. the what was the thought process behind wanting to do it, and is there an aesthetic, overall aesthetic to right. it that you've got in mind? Yeah. So, <laughs> thought thought processes, wrote songs, yeah. and they have to come out. Yeah, of course. So. Uh, that's it's why time. I'm doing it. It's time, yeah. No, in a way, if, if you leave it inside, it rots. Yes. Right? It, and then it you rot with it. And you rot with it. So it has to come out. And that's the only way you grow, you know, as a songwriter and as a producer, that you keep you keep putting stuff out. Hmm. <coughs> so this album, I had promised the media hmm. uh, back when I uh, released Aire hmm. uh, in 2020 now. Hmm. It's been three years. And uh, I had been, I I actually had about six, seven songs mm. and I wanted to put them out because I hadn't released much music. Yeah. But uh, then COVID happened and luckily for me, that meant that a lot of productions mm. uh, for film and TV and shows and all, because they couldn't shoot, a lot of projects just went into audio post. Yes. 
and that's what i do that's my bread and butter i do yeah. audio post production mm. and uh, z5 had just started the mm. z streaming platform and they mm. commissioned a bunch of pakistani plays and they required um trained uh, trained audio engineer who could mm. deliver international specs mm. standards mm. so i was busy throughout covid with mm. paid work mm. and it was a lot of work yeah so my own what happens is your own projects you know go on the back burner they they yeah. kind of you have to yeah. put them aside and uh, yeah and the work kept coming it kept coming so late last year when i finished my last project in the summer i decided i need to again you know consciously put a stop to these and pay yeah. attention to my own music yeah because if you don't again but you know because things just keep festering exactly <laughs> and uh, and i've been sitting on these songs for so long you know they really really need to happen now mm. um but by that time what happened was uh, the songs that i had intended to release i actually had written some songs that i liked way better than those so mm. those i threw away <laughs> and i took the three best songs mm. and again i've been in this very a uh, groovy west african mm. type of vibe for the past decade yeah. and I, I, until you put out your own music of that vibe you're not going to move on so we are going to nickle ga to wo mere system se nickle ga so that's the vibe it's very um acoustic earthy warm desert blues yeah kind of feel so it's three new compositions and uh, another version of aire Mm. which I'm very excited about. So just four songs. Mm. And um and some collaborations in in the yes, process. Yes, yes, so one song is all a cappella. Mm. So no no instruments, eight voices. There's a um gintara, gintara, it's ah, a vocal gintara, ensemble yeah. in Islamabad. So yeah. it's seven beautiful voices. Yeah. And they arranged it with me. <coughs> so their own parts they did themselves and mm. it's I'm very happy with it. Mm. and then on one song um there's a really really great pakistani guitar player who's now in america imam hamdani mm. big fan of his so he's playing he's soloing uh, on one song actually i think he is now in spain is he yeah he's been playing in quite london a bit. Huh. Uh, he was playing a gig with vijiha yeah yeah that's um, just there but yeah great guitar player what a great yeah so he sent the track and it's hmm. very exciting i'm very nice. happy and then the song that i was tracking here was tad noor baksh mm-hmm. on uh, balochi banjo mm. and on the aire uh, version I, i i wanted it for the original also but it didn't end up happening but um, it's going to feature a kora mm-hmm. which is a, a west african harp mm. almost mm. Uh, based in a pumpkin kaddu mm. yeah and uh, it's one of my most favorite instruments in the whole world. Yeah, it's so unique. Oh, it's stunning. Yeah. So so yeah, so that's that's the feel. Very cool. <laughs> We're looking forward to that. Um any plans about any videos for these songs or just going to put it out there? Um videos I I don't have the budget for proper videos no, unless you have a, like a stock up situation. I know. I know. <laughs> no because when I put out I day I I invested in a nice, you know, a proper mm. animated video. Hmm. and luckily aire got picked up for an ost so that got covered the nice. cost but for these like for, for a couple of years i've been thinking i really want to um i'm not sure what they're called but just you remember when we used to listen to music on winamp and all these stuff those oh, yeah, visualizers, visualizers so i want to get those loops mm. like motion graphic loops made mm. and then just use those on youtube yeah. and all yeah i think nowadays things like like that have become a bit easier I, I think guess. so I was on like Fiverr yeah whatnot, yeah you know Fiverr pe mujhe ek do log mil gaye the who do mm. that kind of stuff so mm. abhi i'm just waiting to finish the songs yeah and then i will look into that a bit more. yeah so tell us you mentioned briefly about post yeah uh, work you know for film and yeah. and uh, tv and stuff is that a skill set that you picked up when you went to canada yes yeah because yahan pe we don't realize how vast the field of audio is i mean everything on tv has so, the audio yeah, team yeah. somewhere but when i was here it was just music right yeah. i thought ki music i'll be doing music yeah which you go there and there's you know acoustic design there's forensic acoustics mm. there's there's so much there's mm. so much mm. and um toronto is actually a hub 
for audio post production for North America. A lot of American work mm. also comes to Toronto, and one of the biggest sound stages in North America is in Toronto. And nice. So, and and it's much more regular work right. than just generic music work. Yeah. And also, I like it. I like interspersing uh, my music projects with audio post because music is very emotional. It can be draining. It can be draining. Like you yeah. have to put yourself fully into it. This yeah. work is technical. Yes. It's not emotional. Mm. So it's a lot of work mm. and it, it kills your shoulders and it kills your back, mm. but it leaves this intact. <laughs> <laughs> so between the two, I I think it's the perfect space for me. Mm. I do a music project, then a post, then a music, then post. Mm. So, yeah. So, like, I mean, give us an example of, of you know, what kind of things you would be doing. You know, are you, are you like doing the Foley work? Or are you picking samples? So I'm libraries? doing everything. I'm like a one-stop shop. Right. I I did um, audio post for two uh, Z5 web series hmm. uh, during COVID. Um, there was Ek Chuti Love Story and then there was Dhoop Ki Diwar. Hmm. So I did everything. I basically got the rushes, which is all the audio recorded on location. Hmm. And so I did everything from dialogue, edit, dialogue, clean up, to sound effects, foley, uh, ambiences, room tones, mm. and then 5.1 mix. Actually, you did the surround mix I as well? I did the surround mix also. So yeah. do you have a one at home or something? I, ha- I had, to? so I dismantled it, dismantled mm. it this year, mm. Mm. but uh, I had a very basic yeah. setup. I bought a little... Um, SMC uh, surround controller yeah. and uh, five speakers and a sub. Very cool. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. dying to have a 5.1 yeah. yeah, yeah. mixing system. So music may be like up to hold. But uh, back then, like no one was really mixing music and surround. Yeah. <coughs> but um, for I mean, some up, reason, up these it's being, I think, over be or like up, you know yeah, Torah yeah. like read on Apple Music mm-hmm. has changed their rules for playlists now. Okay. So if your music isn't submitted in Atmos, really? you can't make an official yeah. playlist. Like, yeah. Can you imagine? That's crazy. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's definitely something that will grow. So the fact mm. that you have that experience is 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 nice. And I recently this year I mixed uh, I did audio post for my first. Uh, a uh, feature film that played in a cinema is this uh, Pakistani animated film called Alayar. Oh yes. Yeah. I heard about that. So that was really interesting. It was very very different because the dramas that I did they were the usual, you know, romantic drama kind mm. of no over the top action, mm. not a lot of low end information. And, yeah. But this was full on action and they wanted it to be doo doo. They wanted yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. seat shaking yeah, yeah. kind of. <laughs> so that was really fun. It was a huge learning process. I, I hired Zara Piracha, this mm. other engineer in Lahore. Yeah. And we did it together and we had to. And, and it was. Uh, it's a really fun film. You should watch it. Mm. But it's basically. Most of it is set on a. Uh, uh, an, another planet okay. that's populated by robots. Achha, so we got that. to create entirely new soundscapes over robots ki sounds and then like animals that don't actually exist and yeah because it's very different doing sounds for, for things that you've heard your whole life and that you know what to expect you know them to sound like yeah but this was a very very different so this, this had some creative element absolutely too. yeah and it was very difficult like even the the hover bikes. <laughs> I made like six different sounds and the director did not like them. And, yeah. But it was very exciting. I had a lot of fun doing that. That sounds really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I'm going to geek out a little bit, yeah. but like as a mixing engineer, are there any like plugins that you are using that, you know, blew your mind or change your workflow? Like, is, is there... Or it's just all the regular stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, just over time, I have settled on a few yeah. that, that I really like. Um, so, I, I'm, I'm in the UAD and Slate universes. Mm. So, uh, UAD, I love their... Uh, um, uh, so, for corrective EQ, um, mm. f- Fab Filter. Yeah, of course. Um, for coloring EQ, the UAD Poltex. Mm. Um for limiting and coloring compression 
uh, the LA-2A and the 1176, mm-hmm. again in UAD. And in that case, compression, if you want, I, I go to Slate. Mm. I use the Slate uh, tape emulators. Yeah, those um, are good. In Jimmy's album, I discovered uh, Valhalla ke delay and reverb, oh, yeah. which is so, the most musical reverbs and delays. <laughs> It's so, so beautiful, yeah. Yeah. And, right. That's cool. Uh, yeah. I that's... mean, we should have, like, eventually, I, I want to have just a, you know, mix engineer, like, yeah, round yeah. table, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. can fully geek yeah, out. Yeah. No one will listen to it <laughs> yeah. other than other mix engineers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's cool, too. But, yeah, um, so, kya kehte hai? you have had a lot of different types of experiences mm-hmm. within this industry or mm-hmm. ya humara scene ke mm-hmm. um, and I'm sure you've picked up on many gaps and there's so many gaps mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. what do you think are some of the biggest barriers for artists producers engineers you know living here today you know because unless more people are interested in yeah. to get into this field yeah. it's not really going to grow yeah you know? absolutely so Given everything that you've experienced, what would you say is some so of the... So music, ka to the obvious biggest missing thing is uh, life culture. Yes. Because that's how musicians make money. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the absence of that, you know, there's no there's no room for bands and artists to move forward, you know, leave. Because people who are here now, they need to move up so that new people can... You know, it has to yeah. be a flow, a constant. Yeah. It can't be static. Yeah. Um, and I, how much of that would you put down to, I know it's a little chicken and egg, but often, you know, as a player who's had bands and I have bands, I would be playing a lot more if there were better venues. Mm-hmm. So do you think that is a major factor stopping the, you know, even the willing artists mm-hmm. from wanting to do more shows? Or do you think, you know, on the mainstream people are just like, okay, with well, Joby hai. I mean, it's only the mainstream people who get paid gigs, right? Yeah. If we had, we don't have bars, but you know, you could have cafes and all yeah. that have that kind of culture. Well, but they I have sometimes, to be, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sorry I have to break no, you, no. but sometimes I feel like even at, you know, you, you're not getting, if you're like a band, like, you know, I had a progressive rock mm-hmm. band, we were never going to get hired to yeah. do a show, right? Yeah. So, we put up our own shows yeah. and we tried to get sponsors for them, yeah. etc. And they went reasonably okay. Mm. But um, for the audience, I, mm. I feel, who's coming in and, you know, they can't properly hear mm. something mm. or the bass is gunjoing yeah. or whatever. They're not going to be super motivated yeah. to come back again. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's it's kind of I think everything is convoluted and yeah, part of the problem. Absolutely, it's all it feeds into um, everything. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, there's still a lot of young people who are passionate about music yeah, yeah. and play instruments really well. Yeah. Or these days can program amazing yeah, beats yeah. and whatever and. Obviously, people like young stunners or your rap culture be, is growing a lot. But somehow it's not trickling down into actual cultural level, hmm. you know, societal level. Hmm. And, you know, what, what, is, what are some of the things you think we could do as the more experienced professionals, you know, that to help engender that kind of thing? Because... Ultimately, the year I was low, just go chance mil yeah. is just going abroad. You yeah, know, yeah. Just finding it, their way out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's hard there also. Like, yeah. It's not like it's easy. Exactly. That's what I tell anyone who wants yeah, to go abroad. Like, you'll like, go it's and it'll be you know, even more competitive. So it's not like that at all. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, yeah. I, I, didn't, I don't know how to earn a living from music. And that's one mm. of the reasons I, 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 I diversified my yeah. skill set. Yeah. Because this way I have regular money coming in from somewhere or, or the mm. other, right? Mm. Same. Yeah, yeah. And other than the fact that I've realized I have a passion for production yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. L- you know? Which, which <laughs> we're lucky yeah. that we have. Maybe especially during COVID. Yeah. The people who are only performing musicians were at a complete loss. Mm. But, um, 
कोविड से पहले ये फेस्टिवल्स हेड रियली पिक दैट्स ट्रू एंड आई थिंक दैट्स वन वे ऑफ रियली Yes, of, because a lot of different types of people. You know, it's open to everyone. It's it's not as limited as you know paid shows in you know restricted venues. Yeah, I mean, for a while, Karachi had a flagship event every year, mm. like Karachi Eat Festival. Right, right. And right. literally, lakhs of people were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, even though I always complained, yeah, the stage is so terrible, yeah. the sound is terrible. But it was good that they something. featured yeah. music, absolutely, there, yeah, right? Absolutely. And people got paid opportunities. Yeah, yeah. और मतलब वही राइट बिफोर लॉकडाउन आई वेंट टू लाहौर म्यूजिक मीट विच वॉज अमेजिंग इन कैनेडा द होल टाइम्स इट वॉज द फर्स्ट वन दैट आई वेंट टू एंड द वाइब एंड दे वॉल काइंड ऑफ पीपल एंड सींग पाकिस्तानीज जस्ट बी हैप्पी एंड बी कम्फर्टेबल एंड बी हु दे आर एंड नॉट बी यू नो स्केर्ड के it was just so so lovely to see yeah i mean that's like it was almost like a blueprint for the pakistan that we we wish we had right absolutely absolutely yeah. i i hope that they managed to continue that yeah, in the future yeah. or something yeah. or or and then mikal and uh, some other people had started this festival called kublumpi yeah, yeah. which again was similar with yeah. unbelievable sound because mikal was managing yeah. managing it himself and yeah <coughs> and After those two festivals, like, I really felt very positive and optimistic. Mm. There might be. Thank God for that. I know. <laughs> but uh, but yes, there might. I think there's a festival happening uh, in Karachi in the winter, so hopefully that'll pick up again. Yeah, I mean, and as part of, <coughs> uh, I guess, our plans with Alif Alive as well to make that a thing. So I mean, as a as a woman in the music scene. um especially on the technical side of things now hmm. and obviously back in the day as a performer i'm sure you faced several challenges which you know us men probably mm-hmm. are not mm-hmm. thinking about or familiar with i mean what are some of those things and you know what kind of awareness do you think there should be among the general population you know when considering female artists mm-hmm. or or you know engineers or whatever Um yeah I mean we I've been getting this question right from the start or mm. it, it it's a bit tricky because it the experience I've had is the only right uh, thing I know yeah so I don't really know how is it how it is for men so I do, I of course of I course. can't really compare um I I do know okay when I was younger and I was just learning the guitar or something um it was harder for me I couldn't go because boys learn together. Absolutely, yeah. Right, a, a lot of my friends, a lot of the people Just I ended up playing with. Finding those groups was right, and then they kind of hmm. spur each other on, or come competition. May you know they get better <laughs> and better and better. I I learned alone in hmm. my room for years hmm. and years and hmm. years. Um, so I wish that were a bit hmm. easier. Second, um, I I didn't really experience this, but uh, you know, young women. older men yes in positions of power yeah yeah it can be it's so it's always you know, a red flag absolutely <laughs> yeah. like i'm i'm very careful about you know sending young female artists hmm. you know i have to think a hmm. hundred times uh, hmm. before i you know tell them to go to someone or, hmm. and in fact that's why that's one of the reasons i set up my space in islamabad also just a safe space to women uh, for women to come and experience a studio yeah i've noticed you know i i i see like you know natasha homera yeah, yeah. or you know as you mentioned yeah. that aparacha yeah. like you work with a lot of the younger females absolutely yeah. i i have to say i prefer working with women hmm. there's just you know with men there's ego issues and hmm. attitude issues and i just hmm. there's certain women that i love working with and zeebi yeah. and tasha primarily yeah um uske alawa what i have become aware of over the past few years is the discrepancy in uh, financial remuneration hmm. i you know i knew ki yahan pe to hota hai but uh, even you know canada we see as one of the most progressive countries in the world yeah. and even there i have a friend who worked in a very prominent um, venue hmm. and he told me 
that he knew that the women working there were getting paid less than men for the same work in the mm. same position. Mm. And that was really heartbreaking. Yeah. Um I mean this is so this is something that's common practice across the world no matter yeah. where you are no matter what industry you're in. Yeah. And it's something I uh, I struggle with um mm. I I feel like I constantly undersell myself um because you know the men are more established so mm. just to break in. Mm. I have to initially take lesser money. Mm. and then that becomes you know they come to you because you're cheap but then you know you don't want to be exploited so Absolutely. but then it's difficult to raise your rates and yeah. so so those those are i think uh, mm. the main things that i've mm. experienced do you do you see uh, any young and upcoming like uh, female engineers that message you for for advice yeah, or mentorship yeah yeah absolutely there's um so Tasha of course is not upcoming anymore. Of course. Uh, ZP also she's done quite a lot of work Zara Piracha. Mhm. Uh there's um another young woman here in Karachi Vishal. Mhm. Uh, I don't know her last name but her band is called Tarbooz. Yes, I've yeah, seen her. Yeah. yeah. So she's a really really the good really really good songwriter. Yeah. And production wise also she's doing very interesting stuff. Then I recently met uh, Zoha Zubairi. Mhm. Who is producing her own new yeah. album yeah. and i was very impressed by like her arrangement choices and mm. um the sounds and all that she's uh, mm-hmm. chosen mm-hmm. and there's one more in karachi whose name i'm forgetting which is terrible but yeah but they're there they're out there they're coming watch out yeah no it's it's, <laughs> it's good to see yeah act yeah, I, yeah I, i'm going to talk to you about something after this concerning mm-hmm. go ahead go yeah. ahead Yeah. Oh no I wanted to because <coughs> this is one of the best equipped studios in the country and most of these young producers have never seen the yeah. kind of equipment you have here. Yeah. So I was wondering if we could arrange a tour Absolutely. for female engineers and Absolutely. because they've never seen a patch bay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Absolutely. So we could just come in and Yeah, in fact that is something that I'm looking to formalize in some way because ek to I invite people here for jams yeah. and whenever new people come yeah. I, i love giving them the tour yeah, because yeah. you know i'm proud of the place yeah. but um and the main reason is actually to to try to inspire people yeah, yeah. You know, because this putting aside the financial resources that it takes to do something like this mm-hmm. i don't think that's the more important part yeah. i think the important part is to have a dream Absolutely. to do something Absolutely. and then the resources and circumstances tend to find you absolutely, you know absolutely and i think that that's the take away i think that is i would like people to have so yeah, yeah. the more people that we can have coming in here yeah. getting tours and realizing that there's maybe a future for them yeah, yeah. in uh, creative arts awesome, you know awesome. is is a great thing um, and also i think there's a lot of um i think hamza jafri for example with mad school yeah. they they've done extensive work developing music departments mm-hmm. in several karachi universities mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they often have like inquiries like can we come in to okay. okay so i'm i'm trying to set up something formal awesome. Awesome. with you know various of these institutions Very to have cool. a regular that'd be amazing yeah. situation but yeah if you have people here that Absolutely, you think yeah. would so benefit please four already yeah. that we could bring along and that would be awesome geek out yeah absolutely what we love to do <laughs> but it's been such a pleasure absolutely and i learned so much you. about yeah, you yeah, and yeah. i'm glad you got to come to karachi and and visit with us thank you It's and cool. uh, inshallah we'll do more things together absolutely thank you for watching and uh, please like share subscribe drop your comments and we'll see you next time uh this is a song from uh, our first album uh, zaben hanias album chup और दिस वॉज आर उर्दू ब्लूज नंबर और गाने का नाम है एतबार आई जस्ट प्ले यू लिटल बेर वे the pe mere raj tera
मेरा क्यों ना एतबार मेरा कर तू हर एक दिन तेरे बिन बिताऊ गिन गिन के दिन ढलन रात बीते जागे सो मरते जीते बदन मेरे टूटे दिल पे ढाना 